Our next speaker is Gordana Gardashevic uh, from Banja Luka, Bosnia and Herzegovina, from Faculty of Electrical Engineering, um, towards Deterministic Industrial Internet of Things Networking. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Gordana Gardashevic and I'm with the, the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, University of Banja Luka. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to present uh, my work. Uh, it gives me a uh, great pleasure to be part of this uh, conference. Uh, the title of the presentation is Tova's Deterministic Industrial Internet of Things Networking. Uh, nowadays, it's an uh, emerging topic and uh, I will try to emphasize both opportunities but also challenges and obstacles in uh, providing industrial Internet of Things applications. So this is the outline of my presentation. Apart from uh, requirements and challenges, uh, I will talk about uh, time sensitive and deterministic networking which is a, a new concept in this field. Then uh, I will uh, try to elaborate on uh, uh, those two uh, new protocols uh, that are very important for uh, uh, designing uh, efficient industrial Internet of Things application. Then I present our experimental 60 ish testbed, and uh, finally I'll provide uh, conclusions. Uh, the fact is that Internet of Things is a buzzword nowadays and obviously it is multidisciplinary concept because it uh, involves a wide range of different technologies, uh, devices, uh, application domains, etc, etc. Uh, industrial Internet of Things and uh, particularly uh, Industry 4.0 is also focusing on uh, optimization problems in uh, the industry by using smart devices to utilize data-driven services. Uh, industry 4.0 and uh, industrial IoT are used for complex data uh, task sharing, uh, decision making based on collected data, and also uh, remote access to machinery. A massive connectivity of the things and uh, data collection sharing capability of those uh, provides promotes security and privacy to be a major requirement for the industrial Internet of Things and Industry 4.0 concept. And um, according uh, one uh, focus by 2023, uh, more than uh, 20 billion connected uh, devices will be instrumented with sensors, actuators and uh, embedded computing capabilities. And uh, it is obvious that the network is the important infrastructure that supports uh, different application requirements and different deployment situations in the waste range of industry sectors and uh, associated industry specific application affected by, by industrial IoT. In that sense, uh, the truth is that uh, standardization efforts are very important and uh, uh, they are oriented towards a scalable, flexible, secure and cost efficient architectures that are able to support complex and heterogeneous uh, IoT scenarios. Um, that's why uh, I would like to emphasize the importance of uh, open hardware and open so software prototype and development. And in that way, uh, industrial IoT application could uh, become more diverse, flexible, intelligent and efficient by taking advantage of novel networking technologies. Industrial uh, networking is different from networking for the enterprise or networking for consumers. And uh, here we have the actually the conver convergence of uh, information technology and uh, operation technology. 
uh, important networking consideration in considerations include whether to use uh, wired or wireless uh, networking, uh, how to support mobility for vehicles, equipment, uh, robots, workers, etc., etc., and what's the best way to reconfigure components. Uh, other important factors uh, include the life cycle of the deployments, physical environmental conditions, um, also electromagnetic conditions uh, where interference from uh, machines and equipment can create a serious problem. And uh, traditional industrial communication systems uh, are based on wireless hard, for example, a field bus, profi bus, uh, controller area network, but uh, the problem is that those uh, systems uh, are not uh, IP based systems and uh, we all know that the days it's an imperative in order to create uh, a global connectivity. So in uh, industrial IoT networking, there is the urgent need for IP based standardization. The technical requirements uh, in industrial IoT include the network latency and jitter, throughput needs, uh, reliability and availability. And also uh, due to numerous uh, applications, the requirements can vary from being relaxed to uh, uh, extremely demanding. So uh, the network must meet end-to-end -end performance requirements for applications deployed both at the edge but also in the cloud. Um, service level agreement must suit industrial application requirements uh, which are very different uh, for uh, utility smart metering, agriculture monitoring or uh, remote uh, operation of a mining drill etc etc. Um, and uh, the fact is that traditional industrial processing comprise distributed subsystems controlled uh, by discrete industrial controllers, typically a programmable uh, logic controller. But future production systems will need to meet fast growing market demands by provide, provide, uh, providing agile and flexible production processes. So obviously, uh, networking uh, technologies are very important in this field and whether they are open standards, general or specific to uh, an industry, their features and capabilities uh, evolve continuously. They can be uh, both wired and wireless, uh, where uh, the latter can operate in both uh, license and unlicensed spectrum. So we will talk uh, about uh, uh, wireless uh, networking for uh, industrial IoT applications. Uh, prominent examples include standards from the IEEE family uh, of networking protocols such as uh, 802.3 Ethernet, 802.1 Time Sensitive Networking and different versions of IEEE.0, uh, IEEE 02.11 and IEEE 02.15.4. So there is a Bluetooth low energy uh, and an evolving set of cellular technologies developed by 3GPP, including 3G, 4G, LTE with narrow band IoT and category uh, and one targeted low cost uh, massive sensor deployments. There is also an interesting concept um, of reliable low latency communication, which is um, a set of features uh, that provide low latency and ultra high reliability for mission critical applications such as industrial internet, smart grid, remote surgery, intelligent transportation systems. And there are also industrial communication buses standardized, standardized by EEC, such as Profinet and Modbus. Uh, so we can say that a deterministic network is imperative for many industrial communication applications. So a challenge uh, facing a PLC as a service or a control as a service is how to ensure a deterministic communication from the edge or cloud to the field devices. So um, 
we uh, do need uh, dependable control within uh, the industrial IoT networks in terms of resilience, control performance, and real-time operations. So uh, ETF uh, created uh, uh, one uh, solution and one set of uh, requirements for critical data streams. And as you can see, these requirements are very um, uh, strict in terms of time synchronization, resource reservation, uh, with uh, extremely low packet loss ratios, and also uh, the requirement uh, related to guaranteed end-to-end -end latency for reserved flow. Uh, wireless propagation issues uh, are related to radio and channel. Uh, the fact is that uh, the uh, ISM bands are very congested. We have uh, numerous uh, wireless technologies uh, uh, which are operational within the same ISM band. And also within those bands, we have a uh, very channel conditions. So we need uh, a channel agility approach that will uh, uh, cover the problems uh, that appear with fixed channels that are dedicated to the operation of a particular network. So uh, we also need to cope with uh, co-channel interference and multipath fading and all those uh, requirements uh, are also at the same time issues that we need uh, to solve by using appropriate protocols and strategies. So one of possible solutions is uh, time slotted channel hoping. Uh, that is uh, a protocol and mechanism within IEEE 802.15.4e. Uh, so uh, the support of real-time communications over license-free bands is a challenging task and requires a strict timing control. Uh, that's why there is an increased effort in terms of research and standardization activities towards uh, deterministic media access, co uh, access control protocols. And uh, time slotted channel hoping is a promising solution as it is a synchronous MAC protocol that it uh, has attracted significant attention from the research community and it promises a reliable and predictable wireless networking, particularly for the challenging industrial IoT uh, environments. Uh, this protocol uh, enables an ultra-low duty cycle, less than 0.1%, uh, thus extending battery life up to 10 years. and. Uh, here uh, in uh, transmission, the cells are assigned based on application requirements. So uh, the transmission is organized in the form of channel distributing mat matrix. Uh, cell represent a limited period of transmission time corresponding to a fixed time slot in a specific frequency offset. So uh, one is able to uh, put uh, one uh, a transmission slot in a dedicated uh, position within this uh, matrix and to organize uh, transmission according to a specific topology. Uh, one important characteristic of these protocols is that cells are assigned according to application requirements and obviously there is a trade-off between uh, 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 speed of transmission uh, uh, latency and robustness, and especially uh, the energy consumption that should be kept uh, uh, low. So uh, this is the example how we can organize uh, the slots within this matrix in order to provide this uh, trade-off. Uh, so uh, each operation is uh, organized within the proper uh, protocol stack. So this is the uh, this is the organization uh, of uh, 60 transmission, and uh, we can see that uh, the physical and MACLAR is under the uh, IEEE specification, but EDF is uh, in charge of upper layers. So actually. This organization uh, provides uh, a deterministic mode with uh, this uh, uh, 
uh, operational part. So this is uh, the picture of IIT uh, testbed at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering in Banja Luka. We have uh, plenty of development kits such as Trakinolora, Intel Galileo, uh, narrowband IoT devices. But particularly, we have an uh, open mode uh, 60 ish testbed for industrial IoT applications. And open mode B uh, hardware platform is uh, a new generation IoT uh, platform. It provides support for simultaneous uh, dual radio operation, both in sub gigahertz, uh, gigahertz uh, band and also 2.4 gigahertz. That's the first board that uh, fully supports the IEEE 802.15.4G standard, including uh, multi rate OFDM modulations. And this is the first time that one uh, chip actually used this uh, modulation type for, uh, for industrial IoT applications. So this board is also based on Texas Instruments CC2538 system on chip, but also Atmel sub gigahertz radio. Uh, it also provides uh, light indicators, battery placeholder, and uh, two antennas for sub gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz uh, band. Pro programming is uh, uh, performed over uh, BCL and also it provides sensors for temperature and relative humidity. OpenVSN is um, open source implementation of protocol stacks based on uh, IoT standards. It supports a variety of hardware and software platforms and it's rooted in uh, TISH standard. So uh, this is the example of uh, uh, steps necessary to provide measurement uh, within our test bed and before actually measuring the performances of packet transmission we need to check the connectivity so uh, we need to provide rssi metrics and uh, it's also helpful to to have a picture of a uh, uh, nodes uh, within the test bed in order to uh, create the uh, coordinator of the network and the connectivity with the rest of the nodes. Network visualization is uh, an important tool and we also provide uh, one uh, program and we create one program in order to interact with serial port with modes to update the software to rep reprogram modes etc etc and this is uh, open visualizer and uh, we have uh, the opportunity to monitor the status of devices uh, the program is written in python and based on uh, this we are able to monitor uh, uh, all functions within this network to for example to uh, see a slots schedule to see a routing topology and also to uh, have a live network inspection. This is uh, the new standard IEEE, uh, IEEE 802.15.4G. It defines a physical layer for low power rate indoor wireless networks, smart utility networks and um, Actually, the idea uh, behind uh, this standard is to uh, provide different uh, physical layer configurations in order to obtain uh, different data rates on packet by packet basis. It defines three uh, uh, physical layer configurations, multi-rate, uh, multi-regional, offset quadrature phase shift king, multi-rate multi-regional frequency shift king, and multi-rate multi-regional orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. Uh, we wanted to test uh, performances of uh, this uh, standard that is important for industrial IoT applications and experimental testing was conducted in three different test scenarios, Faraday cage, controlled environment, 
and also real indoor environment by using open hardware and uh, open software protocol stack. And traffic analysis has been performed using the uh, standard metrics such as packet loss, average RSSI, um, uh, round trip type configuration and also different uh, physical error configuration. So actually we wanted to uh, test the performances of different modulation uh, types and uh, experiments were conducted in a control setup in order to evaluate the minimum required transmission power by uh, physical error configurations and in order to establish and maintain uh, communication even when the uh, connectivity is um, not at uh, the best quality. So uh, conclusions that we obtained by these uh, experimentations uh, suggest that uh, multi-rate uh, uh, Kubeska provides the longest range, that uh, MRFSK is the most robust modulation types, uh, multi-rate OFDM is the most resistant to the noise impact and actually it will uh, uh, become probably the, the very important modulation for a, a low power and low rate uh, industrial IoT application. So uh, in this uh, conclusions part, uh, I would like to emphasize that uh, next generation industrial standards will be based on low power wireless sensor network technologies, but uh, in the meantime, they uh, should provide a high immunity against interference in multipath fading and also to provide mechanism to support the quality of service differentiation of, of traffic flows. And uh, the fact is that uh, novel industrial IoT uh, architectures will provide multi-mode radio chips, flexibility in selection of software protocols, uh, specification, but also communication and networking support for the advanced application. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, I'm looking forward to the questions. Can you hear us? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, perfectly. Hello. <laughs> um, we have uh, one question here from the audience. Um, and maybe we'll, we'll get another one. So you mentioned uh, some applications really serious like remote surgery. So um, what's the quality of service when one uses uh, these technologies for such a uh, final application? Yes, the quality of service is very uh, relevant for this type of application, apart from the security and privacy, of course. And uh, that is something that was not uh, inherently involved in a previous protocol, protocol stacks. So uh, this six-tish protocol stack is uh, something that offer uh, let's say um, a grade of services and the possibility to um, uh, to divide specific applications according to their needs and requirements. So it's it's possible to incorporate, incorporate uh, particular parameters that are relevant for for uh, uh, such type of application. Of course, uh, remote surgery is. Um, is still very difficult to provide with uh, with classical, let's say, wireless communication technologies. Uh, probably 5G or 6G uh, would be better uh, and stable. But uh, nevertheless, uh, there is a huge imp improvement uh, in uh, this uh, IEEE 0, uh, 0, uh, 802.15 uh, uh, standardization. So uh, I believe that uh, very soon we'll be able to provide also uh, uh, this, uh, this type of application with these uh, uh, sort of sensors. Okay, thank you. How about uh, that? Uh, we have uh, for one short one question short. too. Okay. okay. 
Okay. Hi, Gordon. Uh, <laughs> you know me. Uh, actually, the point is, uh, you mentioned Python, and you mentioned uh, that you used some um, modules. And I'm just curious about your experience. I'm actually curious about which models you did use, because the graphics that I've seen are really impressive. And what's your experience with those modules? Thank you. Well, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for your question. I, I have to say that Python is be becoming very popular for our students. And uh, that's a good way to uh, somehow attract students to this uh, type of uh, activity. I mean, learning uh, about industrial standardization, about hardware, software, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, uh, uh, the application part, the application layer is covered by Python in this case, and the uh, lower, lower uh, layers, I believe, in, uh, in plain C. So still, it's not uh, uh, not uh, the whole protocol stack is covered by by Python, but uh, uh, due to um, uh, a better speed of transaction, I, I think that application layer is written in, in Python. So um, our experience is uh, is very good, and uh, yes, Python is for sure the the the, the future uh, in this type of programming. Yeah, thank you. Quite natural decisions. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Gordana, and um, I hope to see you next time in Belgrade in person. Um, yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, once again, uh, I'm really, uh, as uh, Professor uh, Tomasevic uh, said in the introductory section, uh, uh, this is really a, a, a very needed conference type, and we do need to uh, talk uh, uh, more often about uh, possibilities in working with open hardware and over open software, because that's the way that we can um, attract a broader community, not only scientists and researchers, but also everyone else who is interested in doing some tasks, you know, some activities. And uh, yes, I also looking forward to meet. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>